Hi guys, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And this short video is going to walk through the process uh, for undertaking a single sample t-test. And in particular, this single sample t-test is going to be a one-tailed test. Okay, so once again, like our previous video, I have a particular scenario. Okay, this scenario has been taken from the classic text by Berenson and Levine, uh, which is business statistics. Uh, so, if you would like to have a look at this particular scenario in a little bit more detail, I'd recommend going to that particular textbook, chapter 9, uh, in the self test questions. This is self test question 9.54. Okay, so let's just walk through the scenario that we've been presented with here. Okay. The director of an admissions of admissions at a large university advises parents of incoming students about the cost of textbooks during a typical semester. Okay. He selected a sample of 100 students and recorded their textbook expenses for the semester. He then computed a sample mean cost of €315.40 and a sample standard deviation of $43.20. Okay, so the question that we've been asked is, using the 0 0.10 level of significance, is there evidence that the population mean is above $300? Okay, and like all of our hypothesis tests, there's a five steps that we go through. Uh, step one, we define the hypothesis. Okay, so our hypothesis. Our hypothesis has two positions. We have the null position and we have the alternative. And what we know is that the alternative is always where we place what we would like to prove. Okay, it's based on our evidence. Yeah. Okay. So using the 0 0.10 level of significance, is there evidence that the population mean is above $300? So what we'd actually like to prove is that the population mean is above $300. Okay. So if there is evidence, okay. Our evidence will suggest that it's above three hundred dollars. Okay, so we only ever go away from our null hypothesis to our alternative if there is evidence to suggest that that's the case. So, if the alternative is that the mean is above three hundred dollars, the null position must be that the mean is less than or equal to three hundred. Okay, so that's our hypothesis done. Uh, stage two is to is to set our significance level for our test our significance and this has been given in the question it's using the 0 0.10 level of significance okay so alpha is equal to 0 0.10 and let's just keep in mind that this is a one tail test because we're specifying the direction of where we believe the evidence uh, or sorry we're, uh, we're specifying the direction a direction with respect to the alternative hypothesis okay and then what we do is we construct our test statistic, step three, our test statistic, and our test statistic is t is equal to x bar minus mu over s divided by the square root of n. Okay, where x bar is our sample mean, s is our standard deviation, our sample standard deviation, n is our sample size, and mu is the hypothesized position of our distribution under the null hypothesis. Okay. Uh, so from our scenario we know that uh, this particular director of admissions selected 100 students, so n is equal to 100. Okay. Uh, he computed a sample mean cost of three hundred and fifteen dollars and forty cent that's our sample mean okay and he computed the sample standard deviation s to be equal to forty three dollars and twenty cent okay so now we can calculate our test statistic because we know the sample mean the sample standard deviation the sample size and mu is the hypothesized position center of our distribution under the null hypothesis so what we're saying is that this distribution is centered on 300 because mu is less than or equal to 300 okay uh, so our t value our test statistic is t is equal to x bar which is 315.40 minus our null position which is 300 divided by our standard deviation which is 4320 divided by the square root of 100 which gives us a test statistic when I capture, when I get my calculator here, I do the numerator, it's 315.40 
minus 300 gives us a value of 15.4. If I divide that by the by uh, 43.20, that gives us a value of 0 0.35. And if I multiply that by the square root of 100, multiply that by the square root of 100, that gives us a test statistic of 3.356 approximately. Okay. So now we know our test statistic. The question is, is our test statistic far enough into the right hand tail, okay, uh, for this particular piece of evidence to suggest that the that the null position is not 300, okay? So what we need to do is let's just see what we have now, okay? Uh, so the next step in our test is to calculate the is to calculate our critical values. Step four is our critical values so our critical values okay uh, our distribution okay our distribution is centered on zero it's a t distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom degrees of freedom is equal to n minus one the sample size minus one okay uh, and the question is this is a right hand tail test because the alternative is to prove is asking is there evidence to suggest that the mean is greater than 300 okay so this is greater than 300 would be out in this direction here out on the right tail so the question is what is this particular value here that demarcates uh, this particular right tail area now because it's a single tail test we take all of our significance and we place it into the right hand tail so all of our significance 0 0.10 is going to be placed into the right hand tail or the area under the curve will be 10 percent of the area under the curve or 0 0.10 is under the curve to the, to the right hand side of c once again like in our previous test to figure out what the c value is that has 0 0.10 of the area to the right hand side we go to our t distribution tables uh, we need two parameters we need to know how much area is in the right hand side we also need to know our degrees of freedom. In our case, our degrees of freedom are degrees of freedom are 99, which is n, which is 100 minus 1 is 99. So what we do is we go to our tables and we have 0 0.10 of the area in the right hand tail. So 0 0.10 and we're looking for 99 degrees of freedom. So 99 is between is between 90 and 100. Uh, so when we look at this here, from a tables perspective, okay, our degrees of freedom, uh, we have 90 and we have 100, 99 is closer to 100, uh, we have 0 0.10, when we triangulate uh, with 90 degrees of freedom, the critical value would be 1.291, with 99 degrees of freedom, the critical value would be 1.290, okay. So what we know is that our critical value is somewhere between these, okay, which is approximately equal to 1.29. Okay, so we know that this value here, this critical value is 1.29. Okay, so now we've done step four, we've calculated what the critical region is. Uh, the question now is, does our test statistic fall into the critical region? And let's have a look at that in a little bit more detail. Okay, so. What we have is we have our distribution is centered on zero. Our critical value is a 1.29 that demarcates the, the rejection region. There's 0 0.10 of the area in that particular tail. And our test, test statistic is 3.56. So our test statistic T is in the right hand tail. So it's 3.56. Okay. So what this is telling us is that there is sufficient evidence to suggest that the null position is not true and in fact we should move to the alternative. So step five in our hypothesis test, step one is to define our hypothesis, step two is to define our significance level, step three is to calculate our test statistic, step four is to calculate the critical values, uh, step five is to make our decision. So our step five in this particular situation is our decision okay uh, and we reject we reject when we reject when our t statistic is bigger than our critical value okay so clearly clearly 
our t is bigger than our c because 3.56 is bigger than 1.29 and as such we reject h0 in favor of ha uh, at the 10% significance level significance level uh, and that's our t-test done. Okay, so what we're doing is we're rejecting H0. We're rejecting H0 in favor of HA at the 10% significance level, which means that we were 90% confident in the decision that we made, but we might be wrong 10% of the time. So what does this mean in this particular context? Okay. Well, in this particular context, what we're saying is that there is evidence to suggest that the population mean is above $300 because we've moved from the null hypothesis to the alternative hypothesis. Uh, okay, guys, uh, I hope that particular uh, demonstration uh, helped to demystify uh, how to undertake a single sample t-test, a one-tailed version of it, actually a right-hand tailed version. Uh, so thank you for your time. Uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland.